Have you ever just sat there and wondered, how jacked is my dentist? Neither have I, but it makes for a great YouTube video. So in this episode of 80 Shack, I brought on the dentist of the fitness industry, Dave. Hey guys, I'm Dave. All right guys, so on this episode of 80s Jacked, we figured we would go through Arnold Schwarzenegger's famous uh, chest and back superset workout. So it's a couple of supersets where we're doing basically three to four sets, uh, highest rep range is gonna be about 15 reps, and it's gonna go down to about 12, 10, eight, uh, maybe six, depending you know, on where we're at. Uh, we don't necessarily know where our weights are with all these exercises. And the other thing that I keep seeing when I'm going through these old school uh, 80s or uh, you know original workouts is they didn't really have much of a way to rate their intensity. So uh, it just says you know like 12 by three or 10 by four, and there's no like RPE or percentage of where you should be training. So uh, like I said in the last video, I'm assuming they were pretty much always going to failure. Um, so whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know we'll let you guys decide. But I think with where we're at now with research, we have a lot better uh, way to gauge that to help uh, maximize gains and also manage fatigue better. So uh, we're gonna get through that. We're gonna give you some pointers and tips of what we're thinking as we go through the workout. So hopefully you enjoy it. What's up, man? So yeah, so I am Dave McConey. Uh, everybody likes to call me Dennis Dave or Dr. Dave. I always think they're the first ones who said it. I've been into fitness since I was like 12, fat kid growing up, got really skinny. Uh, I was told by my grandpa actually, I gotta put on some weight. So I got into lifting weights. Uh, bulked up to a pretty soft 220 and ever since then just fell in love with it. I've uh, been lifting, got into a little bit of power lifting. Um, I was okay at it, never never amazing. Planned on always getting into something health and fitness related, uh, hence the podcast I started a couple years ago. So I do have the Brains and Gains podcast, which is obviously fitness related, also charity related. So we donate to a charity for every podcast that we do. Had Joey on, was that now two, two and a half years ago, basically one of the first people on. I uh, didn't realize that now we're like half an hour away from each other. So now we are at the uh, Lion's Den gym, second time here. It's been awesome. Joe's been very gracious to have me there. So uh, yeah. All right, so first superset that we had on tap today uh, was a wide grip bench press. And then what else did we have? What was the first one we did? Uh, we did, oh, behind the neck pull-ups. Oh yeah. So I haven't done behind the neck pull-ups since like high school, right? When's the last time you did that? I don't think I've ever done them. Okay, Actually, so yeah. you've never done them. I've really never done them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we both, uh, with our bench press, we're both typically more narrow grip bench pressers. For me, for my overhead, it's, it's a high priority and straw man, so I tend to have that closer grip, so it transfers over to my overhead press. Now, Dave, is there any reason you don't go wider on a bench? I used to go, I actually used to do the guillotine press okay. when I was like in high school, like literally I'd be out here. Um, and then just shoulder issues, it just felt a lot more comfortable going narrow. So if I do, same thing like with the dips, if I do more than like eight weeks in a row, it starts to kind of mess with the shoulders a little bit. Yeah, and I would say the same thing. The wider I go, the more I feel like I have some sort of shoulder thing. But I honestly, in, in the defense of that is I don't think I do it, or I haven't done it long enough to really get my shoulders used to it. So I started progressively over the last couple of weeks going a little bit wider. Um, and I also feel like I wanted to experiment with chest development, like seeing if I went a little bit wider, like, cause most bodybuilders have pretty wide, uh, you know, benches I, I find. So for me, just to work on chest aesthetics, I wanted to go a little bit wider. And for this workout, it specifically says wide grip. Uh, so that's kind of just something we were discussing as we were training. All right, so next superset is we had incline uh, bench press. Uh, I kept the same grip, a wider grip, and then we had T-bar rows. I haven't done T-bar rows in a while, and honestly, I uh, really enjoyed them. I felt a good pump in my back. Uh, it was something I could load a good amount of weight onto. And, uh, I was fe feeling pretty strong overall. I think I got to have five plates uh, for a set of 15. So I was literally pumped about that and physically pumped. Um, but uh, Dave, how'd you feel with those? Yeah, so I felt weak as a kitten. Cause like I was saying before, it's like, there's so much to technique with strength and I do pull-ups and I do bench. So I would say, like I was saying, my best bench is 225 for I think 17. So if I get 15 or so, I'm pretty happy with that. Pull-ups, the best I've done is, or actually the best I've done is 25 to 30, you know, cranking it out. If like I'm really tight with the form, I can maybe get 20. Uh, but with these, I never do T-bar rows and I haven't done incline bench maybe since like 2014. So 
how much of that comes from like, that's why I think some of the exercises we'll do if it's like something I'm really used to, not that we're close in strength, but we're closer in strength. When you do something you haven't done in a while, it's really just like how muscularly strong are you? And that's, I mean, I was doing 135 for like 10. I mean, it's, it's crazy how much weaker I felt on that exercise. Yeah, so we were just talking about how like back in the 80s, I mean, they had machines, right? I mean, I don't know when Hammer Strength came out and they had like Nautilus machines that were like obviously huge, but it really shows when you look at those guys that so much variation and all these different machines aren't necessary. They're nice if you get injured and you can do a machine that doesn't hurt, it's great. There's an argument that there's gonna be less overall fatigue with a, like let's say like a chest press machine versus maybe a bench press, less stabilization, things like that. So I'm not saying there's not a place for it, but you know, people wonder like, do I have to join this like amazing gym or this really fancy gym? I mean, even here, like you have everything you would possibly need at this gym, right? And it's like you have plenty of machines, but you don't have every machine that exists, right? You guys are all beasts. So I think it shows that once you have the core exercises, you can build, like that's not the reason that you're not progressing, right? It's not because you don't have this or that machine. And I also to piggyback off of what he said is like, I feel like when people think about bodybuilders, they dissociate that with compound lifts. When a lot of these bodybuilders in their programming had uh, high bar back squats, they had deadlifts. Like one of the first exercises in their back day is deadlifting, you know? So it's kind of funny how we go from starting with that stuff to then I feel like as we go through like the 90s and 2000s, we kind of get away from that a little bit. Um, but then, you know, getting back to it now, we see this huge influx of getting back to compound lifts and we have bodybuilders today when you see them on Instagram doing deadlifts and other things. So, you know, don't get so stuck in the mindset of tons of isolation work, which you have time and place for, but at the same time, you can build a lot of a big, strong, good looking muscles with those compound lifts as well. So just a piggyback point off of what Dave said. So after the dumbbell bench, we did the barbell rows. And uh, again, like core basic movement. Um, I think if I were to modify anything, I maybe would have had that before the T-bar because you are definitely like stabilizing a lot there. Um, so by the time, and also one of the comments I said before is I'm used to doing an upper lower split. So when I do that, if I do upper, I'm really doing three or four sets with one exercise per body part. So to do flat bench and then incline and then dumbbell and then dips, like <laughs> that we were saying, like by the end, like you're just working, like there's no like pump anymore, like you're just dead. So part of it was not being used to it. Um, but in terms of the, the row and the variations, back being such a big muscle group is one where I would say I do think a decent amount of variability is important. You know, I mean, obviously we talk about rows and pull-ups maybe being like the core, um, but I think, you know, the T-bar row, you're coming at a different angle versus the pull-ups and even different variations. You know, maybe I was saying before, behind the neck, you're kind of leaning forward. You could have another variation where you're coming this way. I think angles um, and different like muscle lengths that you're stretching to is important when you're talking about back workouts. All right guys, so a last super set we did is we had dips. We're supposed to be weighted dips, so if you can do weighted dips, awesome. If you can't, uh, stick with just body weight or you can use a band if you can't even do uh, body weight dips. And then the superset uh, movement for that was gonna be close grip uh, chin-ups. So uh, basically, like, like Dave was just saying, by the time we're doing this at the end, we were completely spent. Like to me, I don't know if it was just I wasn't used to that much volume and that many exercises for each muscle group because uh, typically I probably have two exercises like if I'm doing a chest and back day, it'd be like two chest exercises two back I can put a lot of focus into that I can really uh, get a good mind muscle connection and then kind of after that we tend to fall into the realm of junk volume right so we just felt like you know we're doing this work uh, we're not getting much of a stimulus um, that's just us like we said it's the first time we've ever done this workout and a lot of these movements so uh, it was just different in general, uh, but that was kind of the main thing that we had noticed. Now we're doing the dips, obviously try to get as best range of motion as you can. Um, if you feel any you know, pain or anything like that, that's kind of like your red flag, to, that's probably where you gotta chill. Uh, but I'm always a big uh, proponent of getting full ROM, okay? So full range of motion on your pull-ups all the way down, all the way up, lengthening that muscle as long as possible. Uh, so that's kind of like throughout every single one of these exercises, kind of going through my mind. Um, shout out to Dr. Mike and RP. Like when I trained with him, you know, he was always, you know, coming at me for getting, you know, full range of motion, uh, making sure we're controlling the concentric and the eccentric and not using too much body English just because it's hard to gauge, you know, how much was it 
with the body English versus the actual contraction of the muscle. So just be consistent as you can so it's easy for you to make progress uh, when going through those movements. Give us your overall review of this workout. We came, we saw, we tried to conquer and get somewhat of a pump here. We don't look yeah. like Arnold, so this Not thing quite. is a freaking scam. <laughs> uh, what do you think overall from like, you know, your own perspective and then maybe some science-based stuff you could bring in to sure. critique you? Yeah, so I was telling Joe, I haven't done like high volume in a long time, and obviously that's like a debate in the industry now, right? High versus low volume has always been a debate. I just feel like once you've done, like I'm a, I'm a fan of higher frequency, but I feel like once you've done a certain number of sets, which is gonna be individual, but whatever it is for you, beyond that, it's just the junk volume that Joe was talking about. And for this, I mean, we did four sets for the first superset, and then I think four, and then by after that we were like, all right, let's just cut it to two or three because it, it just got to the point that you don't feel like you're really doing anything effectively. Now, could you build up to that? Yeah, I, I think you could. Um, there's certainly like a muscular endurance aspect that you can build, but I think for us where we're at and where we're coming from, that was a lot. Um, obviously though, Arnold and all those guys, they did a lot of high volume, they did a lot of failure training and they did very high frequency too. It obviously worked for them. Um, even like, you know, supplementation aside, like a lot of them had really good results. So um, I enjoyed the workout. I think it's, it's fun. I think it can be, I mean, unless you have a competition coming up, I think there's something to be said for just enjoying your training. A lot of my training is just like the same day in and day out. So uh, two weeks ago, if you guys know IFBB Pro now, Paul Canoe, we did a workout together and that was a lot of fun, you know, training with Joe, a lot of fun. So I think if you wanna mix it up for the fun of it, I'm definitely a big fan. Um, it's not something that I probably recommend most people do unless like you really build up to that over time. Yeah, all awesome points. I'd have to completely agree. And just to kind of dive further. So like if this is something that I wanted to start personally in my program, I would have probably started with two sets, you know, for like the first week, getting my body to adjust. Then after that, increasing it to three sets, et cetera. Uh, coming right out the gate with four sets for this workout and we're just doing it how it was written, uh, obviously on the internet, because you know the internet is where you get the best, highest quality of all the information out there. Um, no, but this is kind of just like a well-known Arnold workout that a lot of people, I think I did this workout maybe when I was in high school. Uh, so just trying to progressively build up to that. Uh, the other thing for me is uh, exercise wise, kind of like he had said about the rows, I wish the barbell rows were probably before the T-bar rows. Uh, for me, something I really enjoy is any sort of fly. And I know we were talking about how Arnold loved fly, so I was a little bit surprised on why there weren't any fly variations uh, in with this workout. It was like tons and tons of pressing. I mean, we did a wide grip uh, press, we did uh, incline press, we did a dumbbell press. So it was just like three presses, let's say four sets, yeah, and dips uh, on top of that. I mean, dude, we're almost at like 30 sets of just pressing, you know? So uh, that's gonna fatigue you real fast. So that was kind of just like my take on it. Um, and maybe with uh, the back, something that was like isolate or like a like you know uh, something with one arm, like a single arm, like dumbbell row or something like that. Maybe would have made it a little bit better for me. Uh, but overall, kind of piggybacking off what he said, it was just fun, you know. So it's important to have fun, try different things. I think uh, sometimes people think they can't do like chest and back together. Uh, so if you're still in that mindset, you totally can do that, and you can structure that. Uh, to work correctly for you. You can even do full body, et cetera. So all those, like you have to do that bro split methodology at this point is probably kind of like, you know, out there, you know, into the, the ether. So you guys can kind of like make up your own style now. Um, but for us, like we just had a good time. So overall it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed Dave's company. And we have to end with Dave giving us a couple more dental facts because that's really why he's here is after this, he's gonna see if I have any cavities um, because I, I never eat sugar ever whatsoever because sugar's bad for you. You're like, no. Uh, one thing I would say, so enamel is actually basically the hardest thing in your body. Maybe the second hardest thing. Um, <laughs> <too much>. oh. <laughs> um, and, and actually, if you are a serious lifter, despite it being a very hard material in your body, I would actually recommend a night guard. We do have plenty of patients who destroy their mouth if they're intense lifters. Um, and then secondly, it's funny because like, honestly, it's, it's a pretty basic stuff. You ask, should you brush twice a day? I would say, honestly, if you, like most of my, what I do day to day is actually surgical procedures, which I enjoy, um, like full mouth rehabs, implants, things like that. But probably 95% of my job would go away if people just brushed and flossed. So it's, it's actually pretty basic. What's the gnarliest thing you've ever done on someone's teeth? Um, I would say it's actually somewhat common, like full mouth extractions. So take out all the teeth, 
Uh, you open up the gums, you do an alveoloplasty, so basically you will drill the bone away to make room, uh, place implants, and then you'll do what's called a hybrid denture. So uh, basically you work with a lab, you get a whole denture that is then screwed into the bone, uh, and then they have teeth again. All right, dude. So that was overall our, our workout. So tell uh, the viewers where they can find you. Plug yourself away, my man. Cool. So the, uh, the YouTube channel is the Brains and Gains Podcast. The website is also brainsandgainspodcast.com. Uh, and Instagram is just Dave underscore McConey. So uh, I'm there. got the YouTube channel, podcast, um, coaching, all of that. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Make sure you guys go over, subscribe to Dave, listen to podcasts. It's an awesome podcast. There's tons of very well-known people in the industry on there, yep. and I'm sure we'll have them back here to train more and talk about teeth. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guys.